All right, guys, welcome back to the Tudor Learning Center. This is JD Tudor, and I'm here to teach you more Algebra 2. And we're going to learn about Lesson 1-2, two variable equations. All right, so let's look at our learning targets. Create equations and two variables to represent relationships between quantities and graph two variable equations. <clears throat> All right, guys, so let's look at Sapphire Island. At Sapphire Island, visitors can rent inner tubes to use in several of the parks, rides, and pools. Maria works at the rental booth and is preparing materials so that visitors and employees will understand the pricing of the tubes. Renting a tube costs a flat fee of $5 plus an additional $2 per hour. <clears throat> All right, so work your problem in a group, it says, um, discuss it with the teacher or peers if you don't understand. All right, so let's look at Maria. Number one, Maria st uh, started making a table that relates the number of hours a tube is rented to the cost of renting the tube. Use the information above to help you complete the table. <clears throat> so we're looking at $5 plus an additional $2 per hour. So if we're going one hour, we're looking at seven. If we're going at two, it's increasing the cost by two. So <clears throat> the, it's increasing the numbers by one and the cost by every two. So seven, nine, 11, 13, excuse me, and uh, 15. <clears throat> All right, let's go to number three. We're gonna skip number two. So reason abstractly, abstractly. So what does the independent variable X represent in this situation? So X is the number of hours renting the tube. So X is the number of hours renting the tube. <clears throat> All right, guys. So. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> what does the dependent variable y represent in this situation? Explain. The cost of renting a tube after x hours. It's the cost of renting the tube after x hours. Write an equation that models the situation. So we knew <clears throat> that it was $5 per tube. Okay, plus two additional hours, and we don't know what those additional hours were. So two times the hours, right? So, <clears throat> and equals what the total is. All right. So in a nutshell, it's going to be 2x, uh, y equals, excuse me, 2x plus 5 as for number 5. All right, guys, number 6. <clears throat> How can you tell whether the equation you wrote is uh, in item 5 is uh, going to correctly model the situation? So you want to substitute the x values from the table and see if they match. So substitute all of the X values from the table and see if they match. <clears throat> Construct uh, viable arguments. Explain how an employee could use the equation to determine how much to charge the customer. So plug in the number of hours they are renting into X um, to, the, to, to find out the total cost, the total cost. So Maria also thinks it would be useful to make a graph of the equation that relates the time and hours a tube is rented and the cost in dollars of renting a tube. List five ordered pairs that lie on the graph of the relationship between X and Y. And of course, we know it's, we said it was going to go up by one, one, two, three, four, five in the X column. 
and by, up by two, seven, nine, 11, 13, and 15 in the Y column. So we have ordered pairs, one and seven, two, nine, three, 11, four, 13, and 15, five. <clears throat> All right, use the grid number nine. Use the grid below to complete parts A and B. Part A, <clears throat> write an appropriate title for the graph based on the real world situation. Also write an appropriate, write appropriate titles for the X and Y axis. All right, graph the ordered pairs you listed in item eight. Then connect the points with a line or a smooth curve. All right. <clears throat> so, oh, uh, looks like we have um, one and seven. So one and seven, two, nine, two and nine, three and 11. So three, 11. 413, 413, and <clears throat> 515, 515, right up there. And of course, make a line. All right, guys, <clears throat> number 10. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, got something in my throat today. <clears> throat> All right, based on the graph, explain how you know whether the equation that models this situation is or is not a linear equation. So we're basing it on the constant rate of change. Recall, here's our math tip. Recall that a linear equation is an equation whose graph is a line. A linear equation can be written in standard form AX plus BY equals C, where A, B, and C are integers and A is non-negative. <clears throat> Let's go to number 11. Explain why the graph is only the first in the first quadrant. So it's only in the first quadrant because we can't have negative numbers. We can't have negative numbers. So this is quadrant one. This is a plus and a plus here, right? <clears throat> Remember this from algebra one or geometry. All right. <laughs> All right, number 12. What is the y-intercept of the graph? Describe what the y-intercept represents in this situation. All right, <clears throat> so we're looking at zero, five. So we're going down, we're going down. So let's look at this. All right, so let's look at this chart here. So if we uh, we started at one and seven, so we're going down zero and five. All right. So zero and five, and this is the cost without a tube. <clears throat> All right, let's look at this y-intercept math tip right here. The y-intercept of a graph is the y-coordinate of a point where the graph intersects the y-axis. So the slope of a line um, is the ratio of the change in y to the change in x between the two points. So let's go back up to our graph. Here is our 0, 5. And if we wanted to go down backwards, we would connect. All right see if that's it. Oh, number 13. All right, what is the slope of the graph? <clears throat> Describe what the slope represents in this situation. All right, so we're looking at um, $2 for every hour 
that you rent the tube. So remember to X for additional, right? For an additional hour, we don't know what those hours are. So we put an X there, right? So um, remember Y equals MX plus B. Back in algebra and geometry. All right, so we're looking at y equals, what was it? The 2x. All right, and what was it up here, guys? What was that? Uh, five. So the five. Plus five. Right? So we're basing this whole model off of y equals mx plus b. <clears throat> All right, number 14. All right, work with your group. Describe a plausible scenario related to the water park that could be modeled by this equation. Uh, y equals four, 40x minus 8. Y equals 40x minus 8. So mm, I'm going to draw this out here for you so you can see it a little better. Oops. Uh, minus 8. Okay. All right. In your description, be sure to use vocabulary, both real world and mathematical. Refer to the word wall and any other notes you may have that can make you help in, or choose the words for your description. <clears throat> so $40, we're looking at $40 per person to, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot my X. $40 per person, we don't know how many people there are, okay? So 40 times X, 40 X, per person to enter the park and you have an $8 coupon. So this is your $8 coupon. All right, so let's jump to um, number 17. All right, in the equation, Y equals negative two X plus X squared, uh, all right, I'm sorry, is the equation y equals negative 2x plus x squared a linear equation? Explain how you know. Um, it is not linear. It is not a constant slope. So negative 2x plus x squared is not a constant slope. All right. Um, for it to be a constant slope, you would have to have something like, um, uh, like you know, e mirror y equals mx plus b, right? Um, you would have to have something like this, okay? For it to be a constant slope, not this. All right, guys, that wraps it up. I'm going to stop there for today. Um, that wraps it up. I'll see you guys on the next video.